Hi everyone. Um, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us again. I hope you're all having a good week and had a, a restful and good weekend. Uh, it was great to see we had a full house last week and uh, it looks like the numbers today, we're getting toward a full house this week as well. So just remember if you want to send these webinars to anyone else in your club, um, it's been great to see that we've had so many views of the recorded session on the website after. So remember all these sessions are recorded and you can go back and have another look if you want to check something or hear something again uh, or send that link to anyone else in your club or any other colleagues that you think might get, uh, might get benefit out of hearing it. Um, remember to send any questions or ideas through to us at clubsupport at gymnastics.org.au. We've been getting some really good questions and some good ideas as well. So as I say every week, um, we are here to support you and to listen to you. So please, we really do want to find out how we can best support you uh, during this period. So please let us know if, if there's anything that, um, that you'd like to hear on these webinars or through any other form. Um, before we get into today's session and topic, which is on child safety, which is a, a super important priority for all of us at any time, but perhaps even more so during this period. Um, I just want to give a quick update from a national perspective first uh, before we start today's session. I continue pretty much every day to um, continue the national advocacy with the various groups, with Sport Australia, with the Australian Olympic Committee, with the federal government. Uh, to try and get a, uh, I suppose, a two-pronged attack, a, a sport sector-wide support package uh, that the federal government is looking at, uh, not probably looking as quickly as we'd all like, but um, rest assured behind the scenes, they are looking at a, a, an all-of-sport support package. And it's good to hear, I referred to it a little bit last week as well, that at that national level, you know, the talk is starting to turn toward reactivation. The AIS is preparing that we help contribute to a, a return to sport phased approach across all sports, but different activities within sports that could be a phased approach when and if, uh, when that time is appropriate. What is evident, and, and I think I mentioned this last week as well, is that that return to opening for us, for you, uh, will likely be localised. Uh, there also may be different parameters between elite high performance and recreational and participation. But the thing that, that I certainly continue to push in those discussions is the importance of recognising and differentiating between gymnastics clubs and health clubs and gyms in the, the normal sense of the word. I think that's very important for us. We have a lot um, greater capacity to be able to control our environment and make sure that our environment is safe for our members. So that's something that we're continuing to push on your behalf. Um, we're continuing, as I said, our focus on supporting you. And in the last week or so, we've really focused that around education of our technical members and especially our coaches. So we'll be, um, May will be Online Professional Development Month for coaches to really focus and giving our technical members and you the ability to upskill coaches during this period when they may not have a lot of other, obviously, classes to deliver. Um, all technical members will receive an email and also details will, more details will be in my email to you all on Friday. But what we will be doing is offering a discount on the intermediate and advanced online courses in the hope that we can upskill our coaches and give them something productive and worthwhile to do and to learn during this period. So look forward for details of that in the next couple of days. We also has, have, as of today, a new professional development page on our website, aimed primarily at coaches. And there is a whole raft of resources and courses on there, which are absolutely fantastic. And they will all be free uh, to, to our technical members or to anyone really that, that is interested. And the final update for me is about insurance. We have met with Marsh. Uh, they are very comfortable to look at relaxing the one hand, one foot uh, restriction. So we're now working with all our national commissions to develop gym sport specific parameters and skills and activities that can be done at home and still be covered by insurance. So that takes a little while to work through, but um, rest assured that we are working through that with our, with our gym sport commissions. So now to today's um, topic. 
And I'd like to welcome our national, uh, GA's National Child Safe Manager, Brooke Irvine, to today's webinar and our special guest, Joel Anderson from the Rec Alley Club in New South Wales. As everyone's really increasingly now moving to obviously an online delivery mode or platform, it's super important that child safety does not get forgotten. In fact, it's probably more relevant and more important during these times than it is normally. And it should remain a very high focus and priority for all of us in what we do. In that online platform, there's increased risks of grooming, of cyberbullying and blurred boundaries. So a club and a coach's child safety uh, obligations absolutely continues to apply. So what does that mean? And how can you ensure that we do retain our focus on child safety? Um, that's what today's webinar is all about. So I'll hand over now to, um, to Brooke, uh, Brooke Irvine, our National Child Safety Manager. So enjoy. Thanks, Brooke. Great. Thanks, Kitty. So today, um, we're very lucky to have Joel along. Um, thank you, Joel, for, for coming along. So we'll look forward to listening to some of his learning shortly. So I just I guess I wanted to set the current situation. Um, we know that we're all looking at alternative delivery models, which have been forced upon us in a very short period of time, which hasn't given us a lot of time to plan and to consider all of the challenges that, that we may be facing and that we may face um, in the future. We're starting to use unfamiliar platforms um, with varied, com varied competencies between, um, I guess, what we're used to and within our staff. Um, some staff may be amazing at, at online technology and others, this is very new for them. So I guess with the fact that there's insufficient and out of date policies as well, with that we haven't factored in online learning and online lessons um, to a, a huge extent previously. We wanted to kind of spend some time with you and, and share some, some things that may help um, in getting you up and running online, if not already. So I did um, adapt something from the eSafety Commissioner, and it's around PEER. So a short acronym just to help you um, with maybe looking at how you can tackle this online learning um, moving forward. So prepare, assess your readiness to deal with online safety. Um, and online learning. So some of you may already be running um, classes online. Um, great, brilliant. I'd really encourage you to, to look at the self-assessment tool that we have on the GA website, as well as some guidelines around social media use. Um, I think it would really help just to look at some of your gaps and some of the things that you may not have thought of um, to date. Next is around engaging. It's really important to engage your whole community. You need to engage the parents, the athletes, your staff. Um, I know that historically in gymnastics, we at times keep our parents um, at arm's length, but it's really important that we engage them in what we're doing and the direction we're taking um, as clubs um, for, in this time, because we need that shared understanding and the shared responsibility for online safety. Parents have a responsibility in this space um, as well as the athletes and as well as the coaches and the clubs. They also need to know what their expectations are in that space. So we really need to engage everyone so that everyone's across what we need to do. We need to educate. So we need to know what our codes of behaviour are, um, where to find them, where to go, um, the reporting process. If something happens, do we know who we need to speak to? Do we need to go externally? Do we need to, to stay internally? So we need to know where these policies, processes, codes of behaviour are, again, leading back to those expectations. Um, the child safety education that most of your technical members would have done previously um, around, obviously, um, the, the process of reporting. 
And finally, we need to respond. We need to know again where to go, what to do, what we need to preserve, what information we need to keep um, and record so that we can minimise further harm um, and so that we can support the wellbeing of our athletes and our coaches. So at this point, I will hand over to Joel so that he can go through some of the processes and procedures that he, and planning that he's been through, um, just to consider these child safety um, elements within moving to online learning. Thanks, Joel. Thank you, Brooke. Just a, um, a quick volume check. Is that okay? Yeah, it's perfect. Right. Um, look, thanks for inviting me to join today's uh, webinar. And as um, Kitty mentioned earlier, the delivery of our current program is substantially different to, to usual in centre activity. Uh, however, the importance around child safety does not change. So, uh, in many ways, either does our processes, procedures, and other child safety considerations. Um, safety, including child safety, has to be of highest priority. So, our risk mitigation actions are to protect one, the participant, two, self or coach, and three, the club or business. Uh, so importantly, our review and subsequent actions are critical in the ongoing development of online services. Um, and I guess importantly, we can show a substantial improvement over the last uh, four or five weeks in our service and safety considerations. Uh, so that's ongoing. Uh, specifically, this includes quality of service delivery and our risk management and mitigation approach. Um, so Rec Alley introduced a phased approach to online programming. Um, we did consider this to be our safest approach um, in providing a new service. Uh, and the key point here is that having a strategy mitigates various risks, including child protection. Um, and we feel that without a, platity, uh, sorry, a strategy or plan for each new online service options, uh, the business could be exposed. Um, so there are a number of segments or plans required to deliver a high quality online service while it's obviously ensuring it's safe. Um, so we're all in the same position trying to create a new business model very quickly. Um, and typically each plan would take considerable time to develop. Uh, in this instance, each plan had to be considered very quickly and without compromising safety. Um, generally speaking, uh, online businesses do require flawless execution, particularly those that are monetizing from the service. Um, and it's important to note that we are far from flawless in our execution uh, due to the, the minimal preparation, though importantly continue to invest in betterment uh, and safety. So safety certainly prioritises over execution in this instance. Um, you can compromise on execution, though you can't compromise with safety and child protection. Uh, without going into detail of some of the strategy items, uh, particularly the concepts and feasibility in relation to the new service strategy, um, one of the critical factors around delivering the services differently to usual practice was the safety considerations and risk mitigation. Uh, so for us, all digital coaching sessions are rostered uh, and conducted on site at our Rec Alley facility in the presence of another employee, uh, obviously adhering to social distancing guidelines um, and in good view of CCTV. Um, if in the instance another employee is not on site, the Zoom link uh, for that lesson is sent to management, allowing our access to the session to be viewed. Um, uh, further, a comprehensive guide for coaches was developed, uh, specifically related to online service delivery or other in-centre activity during the closure period. Uh, and this guide provides direction for child safety, work health and safety, uh, insurance, appropriate links to government websites, uh, Gym Australia guides and documents, uh, and so forth. Um, An environmental analysis, so very briefly, uh, Pestel, um, you know, things like political, economic, social, technological, uh, legal, environmental factors, they're all important. Um, and this analysis included mandated government regulations and, and, and similar. Um, when looking at resource and people planning, um, we also had to consider who the team was delivering the program to ensure uh, we maintain the high levels of service and safety um, and our appropriate service delivery um, objectives were achieved. Uh, so our approval process is, is layered. Um, so there's four layers in, per, in particular 
uh, prior to the, the service delivery um, reaching our members. So we have coaches and program leaders. Uh, it goes to the general manager, then on to myself, uh, and then the, contact, uh, the content is delivered to the customer. Um, and it makes sense having varying opinions and views on content. So we all make mistakes. And um, by increasing the measures around re reviewing the intended content, uh, it contributes to minimizing safety concerns. Uh, also, not all coaches may be confident or comfortable with online delivery, and that's okay. Um, so you do want your, your senior coaches uh, who are confident facilitating classes, or as a, a minimum, being present with a less experienced uh, or junior coach, obviously over the age of 18. Uh, looking at our marketing brand and customers, so our general manager of brand and business development controls all of our online content. So it's, it's one uh, singular source. So he's highly skilled uh, and focused on safety and business development and brand, which is important. Um, Brand and marketing management strategies for online content and services should obviously align with your club values and safety. Uh, and optimizing your digital assets through social media strategies, um, member service journeys, uh, ensuring safe use of, of technologies, uh, and so forth. Uh, having a service and program strategy. So a safety and customer centric approach generally results in a high level of service anyhow. Um, regular reviews are important around the service and safety, and, and this should drive business decisions moving forward. Uh, and seek member feedback. So, although terms and conditions um, should be provided initially, um, varying feedback opportunities through varying communication channels, um, including things like surveys, uh, can support direction uh, with the service and safety moving forward. Uh, then moving on to just some take home messages that um, we feel are appropriate and, and things that we've, I guess, been doing in, uh, over the last four or five weeks. So uh, having a service and program strategy with layers of compliance and, and an ongoing review. Uh, so that is uh, specifically clear coach tasks, management review and approval system. Um, and, and I guess, as I said earlier, a, a safety and customer centric approach generally result, results in a higher service. Uh, ensure you've got a controlled environment free from risks. So ideally, um, where, where possible, your gym would be considered best practice to facilitate online classes, uh, particularly due to the safety management aspects of your workplace. Um, and live online content such as private lessons delivered under the, the view of CCTV TV is certainly ideal, or as a minimum, uh, sending through um, those links to, to management. Uh, where possible, ensure you are growth ready for online services. So it's really important not to cut corners uh, and ensure a customer safety approach is applied to upscaling or diversification. So be people, process and systems focused. Uh, for a cookie cutter approach is not appropriate. So ensure you mitigate your club's risks before service delivery reaches the consumer. So uh, each club has varying resource opportunities access to facilities and so forth. Um, and, and it's not a, a copy paste um, type scenario. Uh, importantly, stay connected. So it is important to check in with those involved regularly and, and have open forms of communication channels, whatever that may be. Uh, this goes to the, the team delivering the service, but also your members or participants and their families. Um, create and, and maintain a culture of safety for everyone. So this should be at the forefront of our coaches' minds when delivering their service. Have a social media uh, and digital content strategy to coincide with your service strategy. So this should be led by generally one appropriate club representative while optimising and ensuring safe use of technology. Uh, education and a coach-to-coach -coach approach. Um, so coaches should be familiar with your club policies and procedures. Uh, in addition to the, the government regulations. Um, though do not simply assume and ensure they are familiar with them through ongoing education. Reportable conduct and response. So it is important for coaches to comply and be confident in varying scenarios of reportable conduct and what to do in those instances. Uh, and finally, most importantly, strategies, strategies are critical, uh, though equally, equally as important is to remain agile. 
um, and make necessary changes when required. But most of all, uh, safety is of highest priority. Thank you so much, Joel, for sharing all of that. And um, I really think it has linked really well to um, obviously the, the peer acronym um, in the way that you, you've gone about um, doing what you have done at Rec Alley. Um, so thanks very much for, for sharing. And again, just a reminder, if you've got any questions, um, we'll be touching base with Joel again and we can answer those questions um, for you and, and have some of those answers up um, on, on the website later this week as well. So I too um, have 10 tips for you. Um, so it was just coincidental that Joel had 10. I also have 10 tips um, for you around child safety um, online. And this essentially is linking you to a number of resources um, and where to go and what to do. As Joel mentioned, there is no one cookie cutter approach. Um, however, we need to all be um, aware and, and have at front of mind um, child safety whilst we're online. So we will be pushing in the direction of the resources that we have available for you um, so that you can utilise them within your setting um, and within your business structure as a club. So first of all, obviously, understanding your risks. I've also I've already mentioned the um, self-assessment tool, which is on the GA website, um, as well as the guidelines for social media um, and video sharing and online collaboration. So there are two documents that are available on the website. Again, we will share links to these resources for you um, so that you have direct access um, to them. Setting clear expectations of behaviours, again, for all involved, for athletes, coaches, parents. So we um, have, again, have reviewed our member protection policy and our child safe policy, and they will be, the new versions of those will be released later today um, and will be available on the website. There's not significant changes to those, but there are minor changes, so again, making sure that you are aware of the member protection policies and the child safe policies. Um, part B are the codes of behaviour in the member protection policy and attachment K in the child safe policy. We're also very proud to be releasing some brand new resources around our codes of behaviour. So these new resources are simplified versions um, they're child-friendly versions, they're versions for our younger coaches, again, for everyone, but they are simplified versions of our codes of behaviour in video form, in a guide and in a poster that talks about our champion child safe coaches that clubs um, can utilise. Obviously not something to pop up on your wall these days, um, but we will get back there um, and we will be able to, to use that again. So. Have a look at those resources um, that are available and that will be launched later today as well. Um, and again, we'll use those on our social channels too, just to make sure everyone is aware of our codes of behaviour. So continue child safety training. It's, it's the time now we have a little bit of extra time. We can get online, we can do training, we can upskill. Um, so continue that child safety training. Um, understand the reporting process, which is this year's. Last year's, we talked a lot about the spectrum of behaviours. That's really important right now to know that if you're seeing something that's not quite right with athletes at home, that you can identify some of those things. And again, know where to go and what to do. When we look at providing information to our athletes, and again, definitely to the parents, um, there are fact sheets that we have developed um, fact sheets online, there's one about insurance, the child safety for both technical members and for clubs. There's also an explainer video which um, has a voiceover and explains all of these codes of behaviours or the, the dot points that we have in our fact sheets. So again, easily accessible for, for all. Checking in um, the 
from a child safety officer meeting perspective. So it's really important when we, when we have our check-ins, when we have our Zoom meetings, our team meetings, whatever we're doing remotely these days, that we actually talk about child safety, that the coaches have the, the opportunity to talk about um, if they've noticed anything or that if they want some extra tips and hints on, on what to do in certain circumstances, that we're talking about child safety within our meetings that we, we currently have. So monitoring online activity, Joel talked about having their managers and having that stepped process on approval. So also making sure that we're monitoring that online and not just from a coach and club perspective, but also again, if the, there's expectations of what should be happening at home, that our coaches are also monitoring that and giving feedback to those families as well. Complying with reporting requirements. So making sure that people know what their state and territory legislation is around child safety um, and that we use our child safety policy reporting process and we know where that is. Again, um, making sure that we keep written notes of anything that may seem a bit odd or a bit out of character or um, any concerns and issues that you may have online, making sure that we're documenting that and, and keeping that. Um, in our processes as well. Providing guidance to parents um, and getting their consent. It's really important that we may have membership forms, we may have previously um, had parents sign off on these, but it's really important if we're doing online um, lessons that we have parental consent. If we're recording these online lessons that we have parental consent, that the parents know that um, that we are going to potentially house these videos um, and how we're gonna do that. So making sure that we're keeping parents informed. Again, the explainer video would be great for parents just so that they know what the codes of behavior are um, and that's for their athletes um, as well. There's a consent form I know that New South Wales um, has put together so that it's a template that if clubs are wanting to use that, that's available for them. Um, so that you can use that and make sure that the, you have parental consent for them to participate in online um, courses. So also getting your parents to monitor. You know, sometimes, um, sometimes the athlete's behaviour is inappropriate. Sometimes the, the athlete, this peer-on-peer, this cyberbullying, um, you know, is, is an issue. There's been a 50%, over 50% increase in cyberbullying since... Um, we've all been in lockdown. So making sure that the parents know that it's their responsibility as well, that they need to make sure that their behaviour online is acceptable and appropriate. Um, keeping up to date with policies, I think we've talked about that over and over again. We've got new policies out, check them out, go online, have a look at them. And Obviously, we loop it all back in to that evaluate, learn and improve. Um, we can always do ongoing improvement. Um, look at what we've done. Obviously, as Joel mentioned, his staggered approach to roll out, that's so that he could learn along the way and, and then go to that next step and then learn again and go to the next step. Um, that risk mitigation, just making sure that we, we have all of these things in place. Um, evaluate what we've done, learn from it and improve on it. So I think that's pretty much my top 10 tips. Um, we will have the next slides around all of these resources. They'll all be hyperlinked for you. They'll all be available. Um, we'll also, we'll have additional resources from the eSafety Commissioner resource around peer resources that I've just talked about as well. They'll all be there um, and available for you. Um, when you need them. And that's it for me. Brooke, thank you very much. Um, thank you, Brooke, and thank you, Joel, also. And I think while there was a lot of, I suppose, general information about online delivery there, it's um, it's great to see people or clubs like Rec Alley and, and Joel, thank you very much for your commitment to making sure that child safety remains uh, a number one focus and priority in all our online delivery. So it's great to see the work that you're doing and that you are having that, retaining that as a number one focus that we all need to do. Everyone's navigating their way through online delivery, I know that. Um, Gymnastics Australia is, is currently speaking with 
and looking at some very exciting initiatives that we'll be bringing to you next week uh, to help you and assist you uh, deliver the most uh, relevant, effective and efficient and safe online program. So stand by for that. Uh, as Brooke said, we'll have a link to all those resources um, in our email on Friday and also on the website. So thank you very much for your attendance today. I hope you got something out of that. Please remember any questions to come through to club support at gymnastics.org.au. And also remember online professional development month in May with a new section on our website of free resources and from tomorrow, discounted intermediate and advanced courses for all your coaches. So really encourage all your coaches to, to upskill during this period. Thank you again, Brooke. Thank you, Joel. And thank you very much, everybody, for joining us today and, um, and have a great rest of the week. Bye.